Oh, ho, 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 ho. do I feel good today? What's up, everybody? Welcome in to your sports and sports betting brand of record. We like to call it driving the line. We're here every single weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We even have stuff for you on the weekends as well, crushing the college baseball game. You know, Tuesdays are very, very big here at the brand. At 3 p.m. Eastern time today, do not forget my boys are ready. DTL Golf was getting set for the next event on the PGA Tour. But as always, before we look forward, we must look back. We are the most transparent show in all sports betting. And look at that. Oh, uh, I'm not a math major, but 8-3 and three looks pretty good to me as our silent assassin and Howie Bokeh Schwab just doing the work that they do. Now, speaking of Howie Schwab, after the show today, for all of you crew members, for all of you who want more, we'll be taping a very special basketball segment to look forward to championship week. So you can look forward to that. If you're not a crew member yet, I encourage you to do so. Now, here's how you do it. It's on the same page. That's all you got to do. Click the link. We have so much extra content every single day. We do a crew exclusive segment as well. And then we're going to be adding to that with Howie and all the crew members as we really start to grow. Now, the man who started all this with me, the rebrand, the relaunch, can't do it without him. He is my five-tool player, A.B. Let's bring him in right now. And, A.B., I got to tell you, when I sit back, when I sit back and I watch all those green check marks happen on a Monday night, as I'm watching Monday Night Raw, I'm getting ready for behind the turnbuckle. We are building a team and a crew here that is second to none. Good morning, sir. Good morning, coach. Good morning, crew. Good morning, everyone. You're exactly right. Second to none indeed. And I mean, Jacob is just killing it in soccer, man. I just got to give that guy props for sure. And we have to give props in the chat as well. All right. Our man, Glenn, who is a Hall of Famer at Austin P, called it yesterday and said, look, man, baseball, Gonzaga, I don't know. Austin P is pretty good. We pulled the win with Stanford, but lost with Gonzaga. So, Glenn, got to give you a shout out, man. You nailed it. On your governors up there in beautiful Clarksville, Tennessee. Salute to you, sir. Well done. The governors. The governors. Shout out to Schwan50. He says, good morning, crew. Catching it live today. Lonnie says, good morning, DTL. Join this morning. We want all of you here. Spread the word. I need you to hit that like button as well. It really helps our show grow because we're also live on Apple and on Spotify. Now, AB, we always give the crew, the chat, a chance to be a part of the show. What are the choices today? Absolutely. We do four good choices here. Kentucky plus three and a half on the road against Mississippi State. You've got Kansas here, minus six and a half. Then going to the NBA, the Atlanta Hawks, minus one and a half, or the New Orleans Pelicans, minus two and a half. So those four options in the chat now. Vote in the poll, and we will update at the end of the show. Shout out to Scott. He says, A.B., thank you so much for the college baseball education. I have made money picks Pick over pick over pick. Real quick, it's Tuesday. There are midweek games. Educate the audience a little bit before we get into our picks on where they can find that on our page, please. Absolutely. 2 p.m. Eastern today, you will have a show lined up. And this is for everyone. You don't have to be premium to get it. This is for the entire crew. We're going to break down the brand new college baseball rankings that just came out, the new top 25. And if you thought the first two weeks that we saw great, you know, uh, non-conference tournament games uh, over the weekend. Just wait until you see what we have this weekend. It is loaded slate. Cannot wait for it. Plus, everyone who's new to betting, you saw on Saturday, we were tweeting out uh, just some strategies of how to go about it. We're going to break that and pull down. So today, 2 p.m. Eastern, come to the YouTube page. You'll see it there. Let's go. And I need to read a tweet before I bring in the stars of the show that I got. This is a real tweet. And it said this, Coach, I thought you were just hyping your boy as the best college baseball capper in America. I will shut up now. You were right. <laughs> oh, I love open my Twitter up to that. Now, as you guys know, we get started right here, right now. It's time for the picks. And you know, on Tuesdays, I bring my heavy hitters. Rafael Esparza is here. Nobody knows the numbers like my man. And Howie Schwab's got that look on his face this morning. Howie, I feel like you are 
feeling good. You look healthy. And I don't know, maybe we do a full segment after the show for the crew members. Are you ready for that? About that. Going to give some surprise teams. Going to give you teams to watch. We're going to have a lot of fun. I love it when you look like this. I love when you have that big old fat smile on your face. Yes, A.B., go. Uh, so first off, I cannot wait for the college baseball or college basketball breakdown with Howie today. But what we were just talking about in the chat, I want to say it real quick. So Justin Weber just became a new member to the crew. First off, thank you and welcome. Second, he says right, he says right here, let me pull it up. Headed to Houston this weekend for the Astros Foundation Classic. All right, this is what I'm talking about. LSU, Vanderbilt, Texas, Texas State. Dude, th this weekend is going to be awesome in college baseball. He's 100% right. Then I, you better subscribe. You better like because this is where you get it every single day, seven days a week, especially on the weekends. AB is always doing extra work. Raphael, now I, I feel like you are a full-fledged member of the crew. That's how I feel. Thank you. But, but you're not here every day, so I want to be a gracious host. I would love for you to start us off today. What do you got, big boy? We're going to college. Give me the orange. Syracuse at home. Last time we saw them play Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech scored 52 points in the first half. What happened to that Syracuse zone defense? It was nowhere to be found in the first half. I think revenge is on the factor. Uh, Vitek, 0-1-8 oh, on true road games. I think the orange laying a very, very small number, one and a half. Give me Syracuse orange. You're, you can do both if, you, if you'd like. Oh, okay. I'll do both. Uh, and then I'll go into the, the NBA, the Pelicans. Uh, my lane of two and a half on the road coming back. They lost back to back home games. They got beat up. Why would you pick a fight with Jimmy Butler? I have no clue, but I think the Pelicans bounce back today. Get a big road with the Knicks playing last night, struggling to beat the Pistons. Uh, give me the Pelicans on the road. Anytime you say that line, Raphael, struggling to beat the Pistons, I will fade them the next night 100% of the time. Yes. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And Zion's playing tonight. They're probably got Ingram's coming back. He was sick of uh, the two home games that they lost. Uh, and and again, they try to pick a fight with Jimmy Butler. There's one person you don't fight with in the NBA, Jimmy Butler. Well, I saw the Pelicans uh, tried to pick a fight with Stephen A. Smith as well. well that's I think they won. To yeah, me, I, I agree. agree. I think they won. Stephen A's taking very everything's so personal these days. Relax, Stephen A. Relax. You got your I'd rather fight Stephen A than Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Me too. 110% <laughs> correct. How he's been in those walls. He knows what it's like up there with Stephen A. Oh, the, yeah. I do. All right, Howie, today's a big day for you because you're coming off a 2 0 day here on the show. And we've got our championship week coming, March Madness coming. This is your bread and butter, big boy. But I'm looking at three big plays from you today. Talk to me. Okay, we start off with Notre Dame. Wake Forest played so well in getting a great win over Duke. A very emotional game, and the court storming, of course, got publicity. I think it's going to be very hard for them to get up again on the road at Notre Dame, and the Irish played well in the second half against Syracuse. Notre Dame has played better. Indiana over Wisconsin is a surprise pick because Indiana's been terrible this year. Mike Woodson, they've lost four straight games. I think they're going to bounce back and really give Wisconsin a game. And then finally, Penn State, Iowa, under. I see this game more in the 70s than in the 80s. Are you reading the chat, Howie? That was very succinct and to the point, which I appreciate. But look at the chat. Howie's looking good today. Welcome back, Howie. Howie this, Howie that. Oh, your ego's going to be out to here, Howie. That no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. I'm fine. <laughs> Very happy to be involved with a great team. Oh, you're the best. Brad M says, back after missing the last few days, let's cash crew. Just like we did yesterday, eight and three. Now, yesterday, I had no plays, but I couldn't have all these guys on today and not join in on the fun. So I got two, two big plays from the association. I'm going to go over 232 and a half in the Mavs and the Cavs. I've been saying this for weeks. The Cavs are a team that will play to the pace of their opponent. And right now, the Mavs, they're scoring a lot of points. So I love this number over 232 and a half minus 110. And then when you are a team that goes three for 32 from three point range, let me repeat myself three for 32. We, we could do that. <laughs> we could do that, Allie. There's no doubt. But the Blazers barely did that. 
So I'm going to go team total under 102 and a half minus 110 because I don't think they get to 100 tonight. Not against this Heat defense. Not if you're picking a fight with Jimmy Butler. Love this play. Team total under 102 and a half. AB, I love when I see threes next to your name. I love when I see parlay next to your name. Bring it home, big boy. Crew, let's make this a little more simple on us tonight. The NBA, yeah. kind of tough. We're seeing some unders. We're seeing, as Coach just mentioned, some wild shooting. But I want to focus right here, the Atlanta Hawks, all right? Jante Murray, two plus threes. Sadiq Bay, two plus threes. I want to keep it simple, keep it easy. Put those Put two together, together, plus 125. AB, we've got a little issue. Now, I use the term degenerate every now and then here on the show, and we've got some degenerates <laughs> to watch the show. But Daryl Turner in the chat may be the degenerate of all degenerate. <laughs> he says, anyone taking the Dodgers run line against the White Sox today? How do we feel about preseason baseball, AB? I like it. Look, I'll tell you this. The Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, we saw earlier, they've got big win totals and big expectations, and the owner put out a ton of money paying for this roster. I guarantee you they're going to take these games a little more seriously than others will. I'm down, man. I dare. I'll tell you what. I'll ride with you right now on it. Right now. Let's go. Damn. Minus one and a half total. Totals opened up at 110, up to 135 in the past 15 minutes. Dodgers would be the first team that probably would have run and a half minus two and a half back to back games if you look at their schedule. Dude, no one knows the books. They're like Raphael. Nobody. I love it. I will ask this question for everybody watching right now, live or on demand. Do you want to do the work? I didn't think so. That's why Raphael is here. Nobody knows the numbers like my man, Raphael Esparza. By the way, that's our featured merch item of the week. Do you want to do the work? You can get it right now. You know how it is. Millions are great partners there as well. Woohoo! How about that? Producer man's all over. There is a QR code. Also, there is a link in the show description. Get yours today. Also, you wrestling fans, I'm not a crybaby. That could also be for a sports betting term, too. Don't cry over a bad beat. I'm not a crybaby. Uh, now, yeah, just, thought, hey, just put your just put your iPhone through the television like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> there were some great videos. Did you guys see them at the at the Super Bowl when yeah. he scored late? You saw those like the one dude literally broke his television, and the wife is like, "What are you doing? Fifty five inches out the window." A lot of U.S. women's uh, ba uh, basketball or soccer fans might be buying those. Don't cry uh, after a bad loss last night to Mexico. Yeah, <laughs> Look at you. that was shocking. Dropping the jokes. Now, if you guys thought that I just had this crew today, oh, you would be sadly mistaken. It is Tuesday. That means the footy is going on worldwide. I need me a little dynamic duo, if you don't mind, producer man, because when these two, when these two get on the show together, they are absolute fire. The silent assassin, the man from the dirty, dirty. And Charles, I would love to. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coach, before you get started, I have to say, you didn't even mention I swept the board yesterday, and I'm pretty sure that means you're going to start with me today. First of all, you just ruined my flow. That's number one. And I did mention it at the top of the show. But I would be more – Charles, my apologies. Mr. Ego Man over here, he's got his own pick management podcast network. He's giving everybody spots on his show. Everybody's killing it. Mark's doing NHL. I get all that, Jacob. And you still find time for little old us. Little old us. But if you want to step on Charles' moment like that, hey, who am I? Who am I to say any differently? So if you, if you feel so inclined, how about you start – your soccer picks today, sir. Absolutely. It's Tuesday. That means, you know, it's time for my lower league lowdown. I am going to England <laughs> soccer, uh, and we're going to the National League. Uh, fifth place, Gateshead, taking on 23rd place, Woking. Woking beat this Gatehead, Gateshead team in August, and uh, since then they've gone in complete opposite directions. Gateshead, 6-3 and three on the road, uh, really taking it to this Woking team who's only won three home games all season long. I love this Gateshead's price at plus 115. 
Uh, I'm also on Boston United team total over one and a half goals. Uh, they've hit this in four out of the last five and six out of the last seven at home. Uh, Buxton, their opponent, has given this up in six out of the last seven on the road. Pretty simple handicap there. Uh, one team scores a lot at home. The other gives up a lot on the road. Uh, and then lastly, Dundee is taking on uh, Ardery in Scottish Championship. Uh, Ar uh, Dundee, first place, taking on this seventh place Ardery team. Uh, three, one, and one their last five. Uh, they've only lost two home games out of the 12 played, while Ardry have only won two road games uh, out of the nine that they've played. Uh, I really like this Dundee team who's already beat Ardry 2-0 this uh, once so far this season to cover this minus one handicap. Uh, so we are planning on sweeping the board today, making it 7-0 and the last two days. All right, so you have four picks today, correct? Uh Three here, and then you gotta get the detail exclusive if you want the last one. No, but uh, can you put that uh, recap screen back up one time? So that's not one, two, three, four picks. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh! Stars Avalanche. Stars. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll give it out here. No problem. Uh, Stars Avalanche. Stars have hit this in seventeen games in a row. Uh, uh, over one and a half in there. So at the two price, you have a little bit of a push protection at minus 110. But Stars uh, taking on the Avalanche, another high scoring team, Stars to fit this 17 games in a row. The only thing I hate worse than you interrupting my flow is the chat actually backing you interrupting my flow. Nick says, Jacob coming in hot. Justin, Jacob deserves it. Let's hear it, brother. Prince of Pick says, Jacob the Rock. Stop it, everybody. Stop. <laughs> I do not want to see one more thing in the chat. Telling Jacob to continue to do this. Yeah, Crystal says, Charles may be a Southern gentleman, but if they start fighting, I'm taking him over Jacob. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh Charles, they've got you. Also, uh, somebody said you're always just chill. You're like, you're our chill crew member. How do you stay so chill? There's no reason getting worked up, Coach. We're here to make money. Stress-free. Stay nice and calm. Thank you, Charles. Stress-free. Jacob, you can learn some lessons. Uh, Charles, if you don't mind, please, very chillish, give us your place today. Yeah, we're going to go to the FA Cup, uh, Bournemouth and Leicester City. This EPL and championship matchup should be the most competitive of the day. Bournemouth entered this contest as the betting favorites at home, where they have defeated the Foxes in three straight while having scored two or more team goals in all three and three or more total goals being produced. Leicester, they come in having scored in 20 straight matches in all competitions and six total team goals in their two FA Cup matches so far. The both teams to score in over 2.5 is cashed in four of their last five meetings in all competitions. So we're going to go ahead and back this play again as I can see a 2-1, 2-2, even a 1-2 type final score. Next up, we have Luton Town and Man City. Luton, welcome Man City to Kenilworth for a second time in the past two months. The Hatters have proved to be a worthy opponent this season, scoring against most of the big six clubs, and have hit the back of the net in eight straight matches in all competitions. And seven of those fixtures have produced three or more goals. Man City, meanwhile, arrive having scored only a single team goal in three straight outings. So Pep Guardiola should have his squad highly motivated to bust out of their recent form. And with their road games averaging three goals and already having scored six goals, goals in two FA Cup matches. I think City just had too much for Luton in this spot. So we're going to keep this one simple. We're going to go with the over three full-time goals and Man City over 6.5 corners as they average almost seven on the highway. It sounds like, Charles, you're all over the English Premier League tip today in the chat. Somebody's asking about Newcastle FC against Blackburn FC today. Any thoughts on that one? Crew. Got to tune in for the crew. Oh. So that's part of the crew exclusive plays that we record just for all of you who are members after the show. Look at the tease from Charles. Uh, by the way, I feel like uh, a lot of said something in the chat to Jacob that you hear a lot at home. Jacob, behave. I have a feeling <laughs> that is exactly what you hear at home. Gentlemen. Thank you very much. I'll see you at the end of the show for the whip around. But right now, it's time to educate and entertain. This is the part of the show where we just discuss some big 
items, some big topics in the world of sports that could ultimately affect your betting down the road. Howie is back. Raphael is back. And yesterday was a big day as we start to head into the part of the NFL season, gentlemen. And Raphael, I'm going to start with you that we start to hear about players being franchise tag, players being upset, players saying, I don't want that. I want a long-term deal. But the last couple of years, we've seen a shift, and it's almost as if running backs have no big-time value anymore. I'm going to give you three names. Josh Jacobs, he would be $14 million. Saquon Barkley, $12.1 million. Tony Pollard, $12.1 million. So the Cowboys, the Giants, the Raiders, they are not going to franchise the, those three. And they do say they're going to try to re-sign them, which is translation for at a much cheaper price. Have the days of the $10 million-plus running back passed us by. For that type of running back that you just said, yes. Uh, if you're looking for a guy that's maybe CMC, no, he'll get that money. But I, I would be bad if I'm a high school right now and I'm a star running back. I would maybe want to change positions, ride receiver, bulk up, be a tight end, because I think the running back – it's pretty much gone. It's like the center in the NBA. You just can't get the value. You can get a running back fourth, fifth, sixth round that can do so almost the same stuff. I'm not saying Josh Jacobs is a fourth, fifth, or sixth rounder, but you can get someone to almost put up those same type of numbers and much cheaper uh, in the NFL draft or in the NFL free agent. So I feel bad for running backs. It's not going to change. It's just, again, just like the center in the NBA if you're a running back, do more CMCs, Taysom Hill, do more stuff like that because I think the average running back uh, is just pretty much gone. I feel bad because Barkley and uh, Josh Jacobs are pretty, pretty good guys that you can get really cheap now these days. Yeah, You mentioned a name like Taysom Hill and how as I come over to you. It, that might be the type of player that is going to get close to $10 million, guys that can catch and can run like an Austin Eckler, who's also a part of this group of running backs. He wanted his money last year. He didn't get it. He probably won't get it again this year. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, versatility does help so that you uh, have more value. But as just mentioned, the draft, you don't see running backs going in the top 10 anymore, like in the days when Ladanian Tomlinson, for example, was high up there. Uh, when Ezekiel Elliott, you don't see that anymore. So now the value of these running backs is definitely diminished. And it's a shame because Saquon Barkley, for what he does for the Giants, deserves a lot more than $12 million, in my opinion. And I, I think they're making a mistake by not negotiating with them, yet uh, it's supply and demand. It's that simple with the NFL, supply and demand. If you don't have to pay a running back that much money, why would you? exactly right now there is an increase in the salary cap this week or this year ab brock says what about the nfl salary increase 10 million will be back for running backs and there's one big time name in your city that is beloved but it comes down to business not personal you know who i'm talking about derrick henry and look the, the titans are doing him the, the, this is how much Derrick Henry is beloved. The Titans are doing everything that they can to get him landed with a winning team and get him a chance to win a ring. And I hate that the running back position has been devalued, but it is what it is. You can't fight the market. It is what it is. Now, Raphael brought up an excellent point, and we spoke about this on our NFL you know, preview shows um, that – if you're a running back, you want to get paid, you better be catching passes out of the backfield. You have to be dynamic, and those are the guys that are going to get money. That being said, though, Howie also brought up a point. The Giants ought to be paying Saquon Barkley hazard pay for what this man has done for them the last year and a half. He was legitimately the only option that they had. That was it. That was literally it. But it is what it is, man. Like Even with an increase in the salary cap, the price is the price, man, and teams just aren't going to do it. I mean, look, the, the, the Titans are, are, are moving on, you know, from, from Derrick Henry, who – let I'll give you a stat that will tell you Give how special a human being that Derrick Henry is. He's the only human being that's ever walked the earth that's ran for 2,000 yards in a high school season, 2,000 yards in a college season, and 2,000 yards in an NFL season. The only person ever, ever. And they're like, sorry, man, we got – we got Tajay Spears. Like, we're just going to move it on. So, yeah, man, it's tough. All right, 15 or 20 seconds. I want you to give me the number for Jacobs, Barkley, 
and for Pollard, what they ultimately get from their teams. Raphael, I'm going to start with you. In millions, give me those three numbers. Oof, less than 10 for all three of them. It's, I don't see them going past 10. Wow. Howie? I disagree. I think they'll get around 11. All, th all three around the same price? Around 11. Yeah. A.B.? Yeah, I agree. It's tough. Um, I, I would say you're going to find nine and a half to 11 in there because what teams are going to do, they're going to let them test the market, see what their value is, see that it's not all that great, but these guys are locker room leaders. They'll make it worth it. Sounds like a betting prop I'm going to put up today in one of yeah, my sites. Yeah, it does. There you go. Oh, you, which site is that? Go ahead and say it, Raphael. I, I, I do the odds. I send them to eight books. Whoever posts it first, that's who does it. So I can't say which one is going to do it first. <laughs> Damn, I love you. I love how you promote your own stuff oh. right here on our show. Yes, A.B.? Coach, uh, I, I wanted to say, I forgot about this. I, I, I was going to mention this just a second ago. Uh, when we were talking about how we broke down on those NFL games, me, you, Coach Phil, you know, breaking it down. Yep. Uh, Coach Phil, uh, I would, uh, I would, everybody, we're going to become St. Louis Battlehawks fans. Oh. All right, just go ahead and get that down. That's who we're going to be. That's who we're rooting for every week. UFL, let's go. You're Coach damn Phil. right. I love that Coach Phil is going to be coaching with St. Louis, and they're doing some really smart stuff. Everybody is training in the same place. Then they fly out to their games and then come back to the same place. So it saves a ton of money. I think it's going to be viable. And I spoke to him just a couple of nights ago. He's really, really excited to get back on the sidelines. We miss him here, but he's really excited to get back on the sidelines. Uh, real quick, Austin says, Henry's going to be a Raven, in my opinion. Is that going to happen, A.B.? Raven says no. Uh They'd love to have him, but look how many running backs they already have, right? Like, I mean, they've got a ton of them, but God, he would fit in that Baltimore offense well. But man, they got they have decisions to make at the running back position. Ravens Cowboys looking for a trade, maybe to bring in Alvin Kamara hmm. from the Saints. All right, Saints, Saints heavy are. heavy payroll. Saints are right now. Yeah. Now it's hard to imagine a world, gentlemen, where a coach could make double. A Saquon Barkley, a Josh Jacobs, or a Tony Pollard. But that's the world the NBA is living in. If anybody missed it, the Golden State Warriors have agreed to an extension for Steve Kerr. Two years, $35 million. $17.5 million a year, making him the highest paid coach in the NBA and NBA history. Now, Greg Popovich does make more total, but he's also the president of the team. So that's a combination. So as I look at it, I'm like, this is bananas. Is any coach worth $17.5 million? Howie, I'm going to start with you. We're just talking about the NFL. In your opinion, because Bill Belichick's no longer in the league, and he had just got there, who do you think could be a $20 million coach in the NFL first? Possibly, if they end up making the playoffs and doing some damage, Jim Harbaugh with his deal. Uh, but it's ridiculous to be honest. I mean, I mean, coaches are worth a lot of money, but 20 million that's that's absurd. Steve Kerr, he's got rings, so the fact that he's gotten the rings, that's why he's getting 17 and a half million a year. Uh, but I think that's that's too much. But you know, let's face it financially in sports, everything's out of control, everything's out of whack. I agree. I, I'm just hoping part of that out of whack falls on driving the line. <laughs> and they're like, we love that <laughs> rate real quick, like, seriously, call us. Uh, Raphael, part of the reason he got that extension is because they just had their team valued at over $8 billion, which is a ridiculous number in the NBA. But just like Steph Curry got another 200 plus million dollars, it's all about how much is your team worth. So in your opinion, because Jim Harbaugh plays for a very, very stingy ownership group, but how he says Jim Harbaugh, what would be a name that you think could get to that $20 million mark in the NFL? Let's say we go to Motown. If Campbell wins a Super Bowl in Detroit, oh, they open up the checkbook. They, they give him GM and Ford money if he gets one. I'm going to say Dan Campbell just because they're so close to making a nice playoff run and maybe bringing a ship. To Detroit, oh that was yeah, the, the other name I was thinking. So they they would they would not. open up the checkbook, but Steve Kerr's contract—it's the same contract Phil Jackson had in Chicago. He had to get the same extension, almost the same type of money, but a little bit more. 
but has the same contract as both Kerr and Curry have two years left in their contract. Both of them leave Golden State at the same time. Wow. Can you imagine if that happens? The price of season tickets just dropping like an anchor. Uh, by the way, shout out to Richard, new crew member, joined today. We've got so many of you because you know what we're bringing to the table. You know what we're bringing to the table. So, A.B., who's going to bring $20 million to the table for a coach in your mind? Richard and Alfonso Alvarez, welcome to the crew as well. Right when you're speaking, both of you, seriously, welcome. Thank you so much. All right, so what the reason why the Warriors are paying Steve Kerr all that money is because this is the transition period, and they're saying, all right, are you in? We need you to do this again. I'm not saying they're going to blow up the entire team, but what we've seen, the Warriors team that we've seen over the last eight years – Right, like we're we're seeing the transition with Clay. We're gonna see the transition with Draymond. Steph is the glue guy, right? Like he's gonna be there and he's gonna be part of everything that they ever do. He's like Patrick Mahomes, but that's why you're paying him this money is to continue and build for the next, you know, dynasty. Can you do it? I don't. I mean, it's gonna be tough to do. But you start talking about teams in the NFL. Dan Campbell is an excellent choice. Jim Harbaugh is an excellent choice. My man Gerard Mayo in New England. I don't know if that's going to work out or not. I love him. A Tennessee guy. I don't know. But if it doesn't work out, whoever comes after him for the New England Patriots, that's who will make a ton of money because they like to win up there. And it's been a little while. So I keep my eye on that. That is such a great take. It really, really is because he's the only guy, Robert Kraft, who's played a coach $20 million in Bill Belichick. And you know how much he wants to win. And you know it's driving him crazy that they haven't won the last three or four years. So if this crashes and burns, and he'll give Ger Gerard Mayo at least at least two years, maybe even three. And if they continue after seven or eight years, A.B., that's brilliant. Whoever they come in is going to be a big-time name, big-time coach, and demand like 10 years, $200 million. Yeah, you would give you the name? That, name, that name's going to be Mike Vrabel. <laughs> Man, Ooh, Mike. What do you think about that, Howie? Uh, it's an interesting call because a lot of people thought Vrabel would be considered this time around. Mm -hmm. But Mayo was locked in. Uh, that that would be interesting. Very interesting. I agree. Uh, Raphael, Tom says uh, Mike Tomlin could warrant $20 million. The only problem with that is he plays for a team that – they reward loyalty over cash yeah. easily. He only makes Mike like Tomlin. Mike Tomlin deserves a hundred million dollars yes. a year for what he's done with yep. that roster the last ten years. My God, man! There's not enough money on planet Earth to pay what Mike Tomlin's done. I, I agree. Uh, the most overrated, uh, underrated head coach in the NFL, no doubt, gentlemen. Consistent. Yes. Well done today. Well freaking done as we continue to hashtag educate and entertain. All right. There's a lot of you that were not around at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and we're thinking about you, too. It's time to wrap things up with the whip around. Oh, and I love bringing the whole crew back. Look at this. We go six wide on a Tuesday morning where we give you every single pick as quickly as we possibly can. Raphael, start us off. Give me Syracuse, Vitek, 1-8 and eight on true road games, Cuse at home. Give me Cuse and the Pelicans on the road in the NBA against the Knicks. The Pelicans should be 100% healthy. I'll lay it 2.5 on the road. Zion wants to show out at Madison Square Garden. Howie Schwab, talk to me. Wake Forest had a great win at Duke, against Duke. Now they go on the road. Tough to get up back-to-back -back games like that. Give me Notre Dame in the points at home. Indiana to surprise Wisconsin, keep it close, and then under in the Iowa-Penn State game. I see this game in the 70s, not the 80s. Absolutely love it. Dirty, dirty. Charles, talk to me. We're going to the England FA Cup. We have Bournemouth Leicester, both teams are scoring over 2.5, and Luton Town versus Man City over three full-time goals, and Man City over 6.5 corners. I feel 8 0 in two days. Silent Assassin Jacob, let's go. I'm on Gateshead plus 115. Boston United team total over one and a half. Dundee minus one. And Dallas versus Colorado. Second period over two goals. 
And I'm going to go to the NBA. Mavericks, Cavs over 232 and a half. Cavs play to the pace of their opponent, minus 110. Then Portland, they're absolutely terrible. We're going to go team total under 102 and a half, minus 110. They're at home tonight against the Miami Heat. A.B., bring us home. Going to a same game parlay with the Atlanta Hawks. DeJounte Murray, two plus three. Sadiq Bay, two plus threes. Put those two together, plus 125. Boom. Now I'll end it with this. David says, I love Howie. He is the man. Howie, it is so good to see you so locked in today. Tell the good people who are crew members what they can expect from your bonus that we're going to do after the show today. Well, I'm going to give you three teams to watch that I think can win the national title, though there are about 15 that really can. And then I'm going to give you three surprise teams, and I guarantee you one of them will surprise you. Mm. Guaranteed. Crew exclusive. Guaranteed. Crew exclusive. That's where it's at. Also, we have a bonus segment from all six of us up there as well. We encourage you to be a crew member today. Raphael, as always, big boy, love you being here on Tuesdays. Love it. Thank you. I, I love it as well. All right. That is the crew, the best in the business. It's now time for the closing bell. All right, AP, what a good show today. What a good show today. All right, the good people in the chat have spoken. Where are we going? Two great shows in a row. That's all we're trying to do. Just get a little bit better. Hard hat, lunch pail kind of day, blue collar work. Let's go. Speaking of that, the crew is gone. Kansas tonight going with the Jayhawks here. Sitting minus six and a half. The crew is feeling it. Go Jayhawks. Rock, chalk, baby. Let's get it. You know, that's my squad. That's my team. When I was growing up, that was my dream was to play for the Kansas Jayhawks. My point guard in high school, he ended up playing at Kansas State, and that's as close as I got to Kansas. But um, his older brother played in the NBA. His name's Steve Henson. Go back and look. I know it's history books for a lot of you watching right now, but at one point, your boy was pretty good. Your boy was pretty good. Um, See if we have anything left in the chat. No, 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 no. All right. We got DTL golf today. And one more time for the people who weren't here, college baseball information, AB, go. This week in college baseball, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, you'll see it right in the front of the YouTube page. We're going to break down the new top 25 and the key matchups for this weekend. Boy, this weekend is going to be awesome. So, yeah, YouTube page right there at Driving the Line, 2 p.m. Eastern this week in college baseball. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share the show every single day. We're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And we're going to be here for the next 30 years. And we're just getting started. But Hey, we Coach, need- real quick, real quick. Ty, on the, on, the, on the chat just popped up. How do I join? Two ways. You can click join right there at the bottom. Or you could go in the show description, and there is a link to join the crew right there. So, yes, welcome in, man. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. All right, producer man. I need my one shot because you know what time it is. It is time for you to go out into the world and be positive, for you to take care of one another, be kind to one another, and understand this. There's only one thing left to do, and I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these tickets straight to the pay window. My Tiger level. How good did Howie look today? My man, Rafael Sparza, nobody knows the numbers like him. The man from the dirty, dirty Charles. My silent assassin, whose head is getting bigger than the door frame. And my five-tool player, A.B. I am simply the coach trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about every single day right here at Driving the Line. Good luck.